Hey guys, what's up? It's Tina with our Blessed and Beautiful Life. So today, I wanted to share some really exciting news with you. Well, I've kind of been secretly working on Joe for a little bit, um, but once again, I finally broke him down. So um, as you guys know from the videos um, over the last year, we still very much uh, like to do home study type things. We have our garden. Um, we just built an adorable new greenhouse. We have our chickens. We have about 25 chickens um, for eggs. And we do, on a regular basis, do meat chickens uh, once every six months or so so that we've got fresh chicken in the freezer. Um, something that we have decided to do is to get a sheep. <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, if you guys just do a little research, maybe you already know, sheep are a lot easier to deal with um, than the cows that we had in the sense that they're a smaller animal, they don't eat as much. So, what I've decided is I want to take on the adventure of um, milking a sheep. I never thought about milking a sheep because I had a cow. I had a Jersey and you guys know sweet Gracie. Um, she gave us a gallon and a half to two gallons of milk every day. Just a ridiculous amount of milk. Sweet, creamy, absolutely delicious. But it was just the amount of milk was just way too much for our little family of four. So sheep milk is actually um, from what I hear, now I've never had it, but I'm hearing and what I, all my research that I'm doing is that sheep milk is actually very, very creamy and very delicious. And actually, if you put it in a side-by-side -side comparison to cow's milk, goat's milk, um, it's actually healthier for you and easier for the human body to digest. So uh, the fat content in sheep milk is higher. I'm really excited about that because you can make some amazing cheese and yogurt out of that. And if you guys have watched my channel at all, you know that I'm all into making my own cheeses and fresh homemade yogurt. So um, here's the challenge, okay? When we looked for sheep on Craigslist, we could not find, um, how do I put it, a tame sheep that has already been, you know, trained or maybe was already being milked. So right now, um, ever since we sold the farm, we have been, um, we have a cow share with a local farmer that's just like five minutes from our new property. And I pick up a gallon of milk for our family every week um, and we love it, but we're paying $50 a month to this farmer for this cow share just to have fresh milk. Anyway, we uh, could not find a sheep that was already trained or tame or had already been being milked. And people all over the world milk sheep. So it's not like this is unheard of. It's just something that our family personally has never done. But I've decided to take on this challenge to uh, give it a shot. And I say it's a challenge because we got a sheep that came from a farmer, a sheep herd of 300. Um, so she is definitely not tame. So I have the challenge of taming her one to get used to human touch and then I've got to get her used to getting into some type of a milking stanchion um, to train her to allow me to milk her. I am going to get her used to us and physical touch first and so we've been coming out here every day loving on her, brushing her out. Joe has to catch her um, and kind of straddle her for her to stop and let us pet her. And then as we're petting her and brushing her out, we're finding that she, Joe can get off of her and she doesn't run. She'll just kind of stand there and she's like, mm, okay, this brush feels really good. Maybe I'll hang out for a few minutes. And then she'll kind of just walk off on her own. So we've already made major progress. When we first got her, we couldn't get near her. And the second we tried to, she would dart across the pen. So we've come very far. As you guys can see, she's very curious as to what I'm doing right now. That is our sweet girl. So she is a Katahdin sheep. They are great for um, meat and they're also good for milking. So 
the goal is to have her lambs for meat. As you guys know, we raise a lot of our own meat. Um, so the lamb will be for meat and I'm going to try to turn her into a milk sheep. So we'll see. She is currently pregnant. She's probably due in about three weeks. So we shall see um, if she's gonna have one baby or if she'll have twins. A lot of times they have twins. So let me uh, turn this camera around and show you guys close up what she looks like. So this is our sweet girl. So Katahdin sheep are an amazing hardy breed of sheep. They're very parasite resistant which is awesome as far as, you know, when you think of your farm animals and deworming them, they're very parasite resistant, which is good. They are a hair sheep. So hair sheep just means that they do not grow wool that has to be sheared off of them. So in the winter, she'll get a thick coat like she has now, but then in the spring, she'll shed that off on her own. We don't have to worry about shearing her. Hey, sweet mama. Hey, girl. She's a sweetheart. So the funny thing is, we built her a pen with a lean-to shelter on the other side of the property, and she wants nothing to do with it. She has made herself at home in and around the chicken coop. <laughs> so I was reading that sheep um, obviously are herd animals, so they prefer not to be alone. But if they are the only sheep, they will make friends with whatever animals you have. And she has just so happened to make besties with the ducks. I don't know why. She likes the chickens too. But she literally follows the ducks around the yard like they are her people. And it's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. So we bring her hay over here and her water bucket. And this is where she wants to be. Hey, Mama. So this is really exciting, kind of my little project. Um, jo didn't have to do much work, you know, she actually roams the yard just like the dogs, so we already have all of our fencing up around our property. See, look at her, she's following the ducks. It just cracks me up, look at her, these are my people. So because she's due to lamb in just a few weeks, and we don't really know how uh, accurate that is, the guy that we got her from had obviously 300 head of sheep, so he didn't know exactly how pregnant she was, but he felt pretty certain that she was due anywhere from like two to three weeks from now. So Joe and I are fast to work on a quick little um, milking stanchion for her. I wanted something that wasn't too high off the ground because it's going to be a challenge. She's never been in a stanchion. She's never been milked. So I just want something that's simple that she can kind of just walk up on. So we're working on that. Um, after she lambs, I will probably give her seven to 10 days with her lamb um, before I mess with her as far as like trying to Tr start training her for milking but then after the seven to ten days just like I did with my cows we will do we will be lamb sharing so we will separate the lamb from the mama for eight to twelve hours a day and then I will milk her and get the milk that we need and then put the lamb back with the mama and the lamb can have as much milk as he wants so um, I want to take you guys on this journey this is really interesting who knows I may fail I may succeed I don't know but that's what my channel is all about showing you guys our successes our failures as crazy as they may be and my wild crazy ideas that I always seem to come up with but fun times are ahead I wanted to introduce you guys to our sheep and we have not named her yet we have tried to come up with multiple names and we can't seem to come into an agreement on what we want to name her. So if you have any ideas of a good name for our sweet little sheep sheep, can you put that in the comments so that we can toss it around and decide if we like it? All right, you guys, let's go check on Joe because I think he's working on the stanchion.
This is definitely a lot smaller than our cow stanchion. <laughs> and I think Joe's just shooting from the hip on this one. Give it a little trim. Mm -hmm. There she goes. Say I need a stanchion and poof, I've got a milk stanchion. Right, Joe? Yes, so. <laughs> Poor Joe. sheep is easier from the back. Look at that height. That's like perfect. I just need a little stool because I can't squat like this for too long. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. So when you're milking your sheep, again, this is all from research and reading because I've never milked a sheep. We should be able to get, you know, about a quart a day from her, hopefully. But even if it's less than that, that's totally fine. Cause think about that a quart a day or half a quart a day. Um, that's like the perfect amount of milk for our family for the week. So 
Now I did have a goat when I was a little girl. My younger brother was allergic to dairy and so <clears throat> my mom, instead of just buying soy milk, decided to buy a goat. <laughs> Maybe that's where the farmer in me comes from, I don't know. Um, but we bought a Nubian goat, her name was Penny. She was so cute with her little floppy ears. And I remember uh, our stepdad building a, a milking stanchion and every day we would go out there, me and my brothers, and we would milk Penny. We would put her up in her stanchion, put some grain in her bowl, and my mom, my mom would process the milk and it was awesome. We're trying to find some more wood slats for the bottom of her stanchion. We found some, yay. It's looking good, Joe. It's looking like a milk stanchion. Woo woo. I'm excited. Violent. Does that seem like the right height? Huh? You want to milk me? <laughs> <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Why? Yeah. You can do it however you want, Joe. Oh, really? So that's why that one's cut at an angle, so that it, when it turns, it has room. Her head's not going to fit in there. Well, we have to cut this. Oh, okay. Not enough. Yeah, you got to go down more, huh? Oh yeah, that's better. It opens up nice and big now. Got her neck hole cut out. <coughs> Looks good. Um, we're trying to figure out if we're gonna cut this side off like we did over there. But my goal was to have sides on the stanchion. So as we're training our sheep to be milked, she's not gonna like getting in the stanchion very much. So the chances of her falling off the sides um, are very likely. So if we make it more like a shoot where she's got sides on it and she can't go side to side, then it will probably make it a lot easier. So we'll see. So he's made a little shelf here. For her green bowl. Got 
We've got some light in here. <laughs> so this is how far we got. Joe went ahead and added another piece on here to her um, little counter for her grain bowl to make it a little bit wider. So I think we got a lot done today. Right now what Joe and I are trying to do is figure out how we wanna do the sides on the stanchion. Um, because really, no matter what, she's not going to like being milked. So, um, but the idea is that we'll put her in a stanchion and it's gonna kind of be like shoot like so that she can't go anywhere. Her neck's gonna be locked in. Um, she can't go side to side. So either way, she's gonna get milked whether she likes it or not in the beginning. And then she'll eventually learn that it's not a bad thing and uh, she'll get corn and get brushed out and she'll learn to love it. Joe's thinking face. <laughs> you trying to think, Joe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got our little latch on here. We can lock her in. Hmm? Yeah, something like that. Right there? That high? Yeah, I think that's plenty high enough. Plus, too, if it's as high as her stomach, she will feel like she can't get out, you know what I mean? It's okay, Joe. Ghetto is my middle name. Huh? Yeah. Oh, shit slipped down. I was born ready. Oh wow, look at that. Woo woo. Dang. Joe kept working while I went inside to warm up. All right, Joe, show us how it works. <laughs> Man, come on out. <laughs> That's a good, um, that's a good angle, babe. It's not too steep for her. That's perfect. Oh yeah. All right, you guys. So I came inside. Joe's getting ready to come in. It's getting really chilly out. So we're pretty much done with the milk stanchion. I think it turned out really good. Um, height wise and everything we just kind of eyeballed it and you know went for it so we're gonna have to put her in there and see how she does as far as like fitting in there and all that and might have to make some minor adjustments so i think starting tomorrow we are going to move the stanchion where we want it and we're going to try to get her near it and let her smell it and see it and you know just get her used to the fact that it's there and it's not something that's going to hurt her um, my plan is to put the stanchion inside of our detached shop that we have in the backyard and that way whenever i lead her in to go milking um, we're going into kind of a clean environment we're not sitting out in the dirt somewhere um, and it's going to protect us from the elements so when i'm milking in the 
the winter or even the heat of the summer, I'm protected um, with an enclosed building. So I think that's where we're gonna keep the stanchion. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, thanks you guys for hanging out with us, um, watching us build this stanchion. If you like this video and you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to our channel and hang out with us. We love having you guys here. All right, take care. We'll see you next time.